host, Jaden, and I'm here today with my good friend here, Nick. Um, you know, he covers 49ers as well, uh, so he, his team is doing very good this year. Uh, probably the best team in the NFC. My pick to go to the Super Bowl to represent the NFC, so we'll talk about that, Nick, uh, here in a second. But um, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you yeah you bet. It's been a, a great year as a, if you're a 49er fan, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, man. So, like I said, uh, this year is can you, can you believe this, man? Like, we're already about to hit week eighteen. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. What's really what what makes me the saddest, I think, is is knowing that we have one more Sunday of uh, NFL Red Zone, and then we got to wait like nine months until it comes back again. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm excited about the playoffs. I'm excited about you know the 49ers making a little Super Bowl push, but it's like. I look forward to Sundays so much where I can just sit there for like eight, nine hours and just, you know, no matter what I'm doing, like I got my earbuds in, so I'm listening, right? So even if I got to do some, you know, honey, do this, honey, do that. Your daddy, take me here. Dad, wherever we're going, I got football on in my ear all day long. And so that's going to be missed for sure. Yeah, yeah. What would we do without Red Zone, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Scott Hansen. Um, But yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, man, it's been a crazy year. Um, you know, I, I don't think th there's a lot of teams that I guess you could say were really good. That I, don't, I did not pick to be good. I didn't think the Ravens would be as good as they were this year. I, and I, you know, uh, definitely didn't think uh, the 49ers, would, I knew they were going to be good, but man, they've been like. They're not dominant. this good. <laughs> they've been dominant. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mean, so can you talk about that, man? Like, you know, how, how they've been this year and what's made them. Pretty much the class of the NFC. Yeah, I mean it's top to bottom. Their their uh, their offense is amazing. You know, the, the only problem they really have on offense is that offensive line can be a little suspect at times uh, outside of Trent Williams, um, and then their defense. I mean, defensive line is amazing. The middle linebacker is probably the best duo in the NFL, and then the secondary has really stepped up. When Hufunga went down, it was like, oh no, this is gonna be bad. Uh, but but the the you know the, the whole secondary stepped up. They got better which is crazy that that would happen because Hufunga is an all pro and he's probably going to be one again next year. Like when he comes back fully healthy, but uh, Traverius Ward probably playing out an all pro level as well. Right now, Diamador Lenore stepped up into that slot spot in the secondary and he's been fantastic. And it's not just offense. It's not just defense. It's also special teams. You're talking about Jake Moody, a kicker that they drafted in the third round who had a little, a couple struggles early in the season and hasn't missed a kick since like he's been money. We call him money Moody around here. And they probably have the best punter in the NFL in Mitch Wisnowski. He leads the NFL in per kicks inside the 20. Like, it's crazy. And I know that a lot of that has to do with your offense, right? Because if your offense is never getting any yards and you're back kicking from your own 10, you're not going to be putting a whole lot of balls inside the 20, right? That happens when you stall around the 40, the 30, you know, things like that. Like, you're able to get those. So. So he definitely benefits from that offense as well. But, I mean, top to bottom, it's been a great football team. And the coaching staff, you can't say enough about what Wilkes has done there on the defensive side since he came down from the booth. Kyle Shanahan should be coach of the year again, but people expected the Niners to be good. So they're going to be like, eh, he's just doing what we expected. But what he's doing is phenomenal. What he's done with Brock Purdy, what he's done, you know, inside and out, the, the play calls, the, the designs he schemes up each and every week based on their opponents. And you can tell that in that Baltimore game when they got worked, he didn't show too much because I think he thinks that they might be playing this team again in February. So he played kind of a vanilla offense against them. Like, I, I know Kyle Shanahan offense, and that was not a very elaborate Kyle Shanahan offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like what you did there. I saw that. Um, <laughs> so if, if everybody doesn't, I've said this multiple times on this show. So for people who don't know, my picks, and this has been the whole season, my two world picks have been the Ravens and the 49ers, and I'm not changing it. Um, I do think these two are the best teams in the NFL, and I think mm -hmm. they will face off in Super Bowl 58. Yeah, I mean, they, if you look at it right now, they're the number one seed. They're going to get those buys. They're going to have a, a great position to, uh, to advance. I mean, the 49ers... And the Ravens both have one more game in the regular season. Niners have mentioned that they might play their starters a little bit. I hope they don't. I hope they just let them rest two full weeks. I'm not worried about rust. Uh, this is a, an offense that's been clicking all year long. They, like you said, they, they're just dominant. And so give them the rest they need. 
you know, get some of these guys off the practice squad up, get them some time, keep everybody healthy. There's definitely going to be no McCaffrey, probably not Trent Williams. So keep your best guys ready to go for the games that really matter. And this game just means nothing this Sunday against the Rams. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and so, like I said, man, it's been interesting because Brock Purdy, as of course everyone knows, he's been playing at a very high caliber level. Uh, the Mr. Relevance. I think we can kind of maybe remove that little tag from him now because he's still yeah. falling, man. Like, yeah, he yeah, he was the last pick, but it'll be with him forever, though, right? Yeah, it'll be with him forever. The tag will always be there, but he has shown that he's very relevant. Right. Yeah, and I want people to, <laughs> to stop saying he's a system quarterback and all this. Listen, oh man. Listen. This kid is- that stuff drove me nuts, man. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? You're a quarterback. You're supposed to run that system that you're in. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm in this system, but I'm actually going to run the system they run in Philadelphia. You're like, what? Like, what are you talking about? System quarterback, that's great. That's what you want to be. You want to be able to do exactly what your head coach needs you to do in the offense. And that's what Brock Purdy does every single week, man. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's what he does. He is amazing. Um, I mean, we're just talking about system. You could say that about Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, a lot of quarterbacks. You could say that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, this is all good. Brock is he's um, he he's definitely been up there in the MVP talks along with Christian McCaffrey. And it's funny enough, uh, you ask both of them, they'll mention like it's like a little uh, Spider Man meme where they're pointing at each other. <laughs> it's like no, he he should be yep. no he should. Hey, you. No you, no you, no yeah, you. Like, <laughs> and it's fitting. Like, you can see it, right? I mean, both guys have been amazing for this football team. Without one, you probably don't have the other, which is why maybe neither of them are going to win it, unfortunately. It's probably going to go to Lamar Jackson, just based on what he's done this season. It's been incredible. And we saw how bad his team has finished the last two years when he's not in the lineup. So he he's an incredible quarterback. He's deserving of that uh, MVP as well. Like, I, don't get me wrong. If, if I had to vote today... I'd probably vote Christian McCaffrey because, I mean, that guy, just he does everything for that football team. But what's probably going to happen is it's going to be Lamar Jackson. And I, it's going to be hard to argue that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so happy for Christian since he got traded to, to San Francisco. Now he's able to really be on a team that utilizes him correctly and, you know, so, so – mm-hmm. well, well, we already knew he was special, you know, in Carolina, but – you're with a coach in the system that's going to know how to actually, you know. Yeah, get the most out of him, right? Using the, the way he, he, you know, he barely came off the field all year long. It'd be, there'd be games where he'd be the only running back that got to carry on this football team. And it's just crazy that his durability has lasted this long. On the, on the Locked On 49ers podcast that I jump on every every Wednesday, uh, Eric Crocker and Brian Peacock, they, they were talking about the other day. They were saying, oh, you know, this is his superpower. Christian McCaffrey's superpower has been staying healthy because he hasn't been able to do it like for since 2019. And the fact that he's done it this year has just been incredible because this 49er team, when he's in the lineup, man, it, it's something else. It just, it, it, it runs at a, a speed that other offenses just don't have. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Um, and, and speaking of, you know, other teams. So, you know, like I said, in the NFC, you look at, we have, obviously have the 49ers, um, after that, though, man, it's kind of been a little shaky. I mean, of course, we had the Eagles yeah. represent the NFC in the Super Bowl last year. They looked really awesome last year. But this year, they start out 10-1, and one, then they kind of been teetering, man. Like, what do you think's going on with Philly? You know, what's what's up with them? Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I love it. But <laughs> it, you know what it is? I think they just kind of figured out that offense. They kind of know what they want to do. And it, it looked a whole lot like it did last year. And I don't think that Sirianni and his guys made a whole lot of changes to the their offensive scheme. And so when you see something long enough and you find a couple teams out there that can beat it, then they show you the blueprint of how you can beat it. And a lot of teams did it. The 49ers went into Philly and, you know, put the Clobber. smack yeah. on them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was them saying, like, look what would have happened in the championship game last year if we had our quarterback. Like, it is it was kind of a makeup game, right? And you look at Philly, you look at Dallas, you look at Detroit. Like a lot of those teams have some really, really bad losses on their schedule this season. You know, and a lot of easy wins. The 49ers had some bad losses too. You know, that that loss to Minnesota it was not good. That, that was a rough one to Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland showed that they have one of the best defenses in the in the league. 
And obviously the Baltimore Ravens are at the top of the, the NFL and they, they, they really put, a, I mean, five turnovers, like no team is ever going to win a football game when you turn it over five times. No. So it, the NFC's I don't want to say it's wide open because, you know, I think there's the 49ers and then there's everybody else. But I mean, even your Falcons still have a shot of making the postseason <laughs> this weekend, right? They just need to win and have the Bucks lose, right? Isn't that it? Isn't that I all mean, they yes, need? Technically, te- mathematically, yes. Technically, that's go the, Panthers, that, right? Listen, no, I don't want to <laughs> see. I don't think I don't want to see an Arthur Smith ran offense in the playoffs. I don't want to see that. I it, we're tired of him here in Atlanta. I mean, everybody's like, yeah. want is they want him and Desmond Ritter booted. Yeah, um, I mean, is it time to reset, like, and go for another young quarterback, or do you think they'll go after like a Russell Wilson? You know, somebody who's going to get cast off from their team. Like, what do you think the Falcons are going to do going forward? Um, well, I, I definitely assuming they don't make the playoffs. Yeah. I think a quarterback change is definitely needed. Um, I think you mm-hmm. can't, you can't look at what happened the past two years with Mariota and Ritter right. and say, we're fine with our quarterback. And Heineke. Position. No, no, no. And Heineke. Don't forget about Heineke. And yeah. Heineke who's played decent in spots <laughs> this year, uh, but yeah. it's still not enough. Uh, you know, no. you, you need somebody who's going to come in there and play consistent ball not turn Desmond Ritter has turned the ball over every game he's played in this year Nick where it's been it's a too much. interception every game man every game yeah do that. yeah to not have a zero in the turnover margin in a game one time all year that's brutal that, that's really tough so yeah I definitely see something like that happening maybe a little bit of a shake up um in the in the front office yeah uh, you know I could, I could see maybe a coordinator going or something uh but they're, they're close, right? I feel like they've got a lot of talent, they, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Like, that's a really talented squad. If you can get a quarterback in there that can get make this offense move a little bit more, maybe get Pitts involved a little bit more, you know, maybe utilize Drake London to his full ability. I, I mean, this is, this is a team with two solid young running backs, too. I mean, you make one big move in the offseason and bring in a, a solid veteran quarterback or a, a – you know, look what happened to the Texans. They went and drafted C.J. Stroud, and look at how much their season turned around and how much better they got by drafting a, a good quarterback. I mean, one and two, you look at the big difference, right, the way the Panthers and the Texans went this year. They're such opposite directions. And you look at the quarterback position, and they they, they played in opposite directions, right? C.J. Stroud looks like he's going to be in the league for the next 15 years, whereas Bryce Young, you're like, does he have it? You know, is he is he the guy? Like, I don't know. So I, I'm rooting for the Falcons to to get that guy, and, and even if it's just going out and signing a veteran who can come in and kind of hold everything down. Yeah, that might be the best option. Um, they, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, as far as I don't want to go through another phase with, with another young quarterback. I mean, they're in a spot where the defense, man, they've been playing fun for the first time, and it feels like forever. The Falcons have good good defense, but yeah. it's just. The offense isn't there. It's like, can we please have equal? Can we have both of them at the running at the same time, please? You know, nope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few teams get that, and those are the ones that are sitting atop, you know, their conferences right now. Your 49ers are one of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's a shame, but we'll see what happens. Um, so I meant to ask you, man. So with uh, here in the playoffs, do you think? What teams do you think could pose a possible threat to your 49ers? Now, do you think they're – I know they're dominant. We know they're really good. But if you have to be worried about somebody, who would it be? In the NFC? In the NFC, yes. Yeah. Yeah, in the NFC, I mean, obviously, anytime you, you've got a team like Dallas, you know, with, with the explosive offense like that, you know, you do worry about it. I know the 49ers beat them up. <laughs> You know, early in the year, bad. Beat them bad. And that was the, one of my favorite moments of the entire season. But uh, they they definitely uh, scare you a little bit. A team like the Rams could also scare you yeah. just because it's a team you know extremely well. You play twice a year, you know, and, and uh, Matt Stafford has proven he's, a, he's a, one of the best that, that's ever done it. You know, he's put up the numbers. He's won himself a Super Bowl now. And, and you got Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua and, and oh, Kyrie good. Williams who – who has shown, I mean, Williams too. I mean, you're talking yeah, about Kyle two Williams. young guys that just kind of came out of nowhere and, and are really, they're, they're going to be around for a while. Those guys are both legit offensive studs. And so the, the Rams, the Rams probably, if you had a number one worry, uh, it, it's them. I hope they lose to whoever they play in the first round. So the Niners don't even need to worry about it down the road. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the Rams, they, you know, after the Super Bowl, uh, after that, we all thought, you know, they were good. And they didn't look good um, last year, you know, but this mm-hmm. year they and they been a little shaky this year. Matthew Stafford's been kind of banged up but since he's been back in the lineup and O-line's gotten healthier and and Puka Nakua, a uh, gem that they found there. Um, man, he's been awesome, dude. He's just been awesome. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He, he's turned me into a fan. Like, I, I want to watch. Yeah, I mean, he – He's, he's always open, you know? It's one of those guys where it's like, how does he always do that? And Kyron Williams, like, if he had stayed healthy all year, he could be at the top of the league in rushing. Like, he's put up incredible numbers every week he's played. And, he, you know, he, he watch out. Watch out in the postseason. You get some of these young guys that, you know, people kind of like, oh, it's not a rookie. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Ah, if you got a veteran like Matt Stafford leading the way, you know, I – I, again, I, I don't I don't want to worry about the Rams. I, I'm not fully worried about them because the 49ers, as long as they handle business, don't turn the ball over. Like, they can beat any team that's out there. But, yeah, if I had to pick one team that, that I don't want to face, is the Rams. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think the Rams could definitely do it. So, no, so no, not Detroit, Philly. I don't know. I mean, you look at Detroit and who have they beaten other than Kansas City opening day? You know, like most of their wins came against some bad football teams and they've lost – to the good football teams, yeah. They, I, I was on a, a radio show here in, in the, uh, the the Central Valley area the other day, and we were having the same discussion. And the the host CK he said, "Hey, they're fool's gold." And I was like, "Oh, okay, all right, fool's gold, okay." And so he started listing all the teams that they had beaten and all the teams they had lost to. And yeah, I mean, they're they're a team that it's a great record. I love Dan Campbell. I love what he's doing there. I love. You know, the the guts that that guy has on some of these calls, like, yeah, he should have kicked the extra point after that first penalty the other night and not continued to go for two. Not his best moment. But earlier with the, the fake punt and the fourth down calls and everything, like, uh, I, I love what he's doing. But that being said, I think if you take away a Monroe St. Brown from that offense, that it doesn't run very well So because everything goes through him. Yeah. And if you got a good slot corner that can follow him around, which 49ers do, I think that's a team that that you can you can figure out. You have the blueprint out there how to beat this team. Their defense isn't quite there yet. They got Hutchinson; he's a stud. You know, Anzalone's still doing things well in the the uh, middle linebacker position, but their secondary has been suspect all year long. And you can't win in the postseason if your secondary doesn't shut down the other team. Period. Period. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you pretty much said it, man. I agree. Uh, the Lions, you know, and, and they're such a. I kind of do like being like my second um, team to root for because if you if you're a Falcons fan, you have to have a second team to root for. That's just how it goes. Um, <laughs> they've been, nice. they've been my second team. I've been trying to, you know, just want to see them win, man. I want to see them do well. It's good for the city of Detroit, you know, because mm-hmm. um, they've been long. Yeah, my brother's been a my brother's been a Lions fan since Barry Sanders rookie season. He uh, so he you know so constantly yeah he's had a rough a rough life. Yeah. When it comes to, <laughs> to to rooting for his football team. So I was really happy for him, you know, get that first division title since what, 93 or something like that's crazy. Hey man, they, they're playing good. Uh, but like you said, you know, that strength of schedule is going to come into play um, yep. whole season time. So uh, we'll see how they do. But um, yeah, man, like I said, I'm still picking, you know, the, Four Niners and the Ravens to me in the Super Bowl. I, I, I believe these are the two best teams in the league, and nothing has, you know, come about to change that for me. Um, so I'm just waiting to see what happens, man. I mean, yeah. So if I had to pick right now, I'm I'm, I'm pick the 49ers, but I and I look at the AFC, and it's easy to, to look at the Ravens and think, yeah, that that's the team to be right there, and they are. But I I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. I know they've had a rough year. The rough, receivers man. have let him down, but I just I, I know he's gonna find a way to do it and he's gonna be back in that Super Bowl. You watch. He does it, man. He he figures it out. He knows what he needs to do and he does it. He he does. I mean, you know, I guess you could kind of say it was like it's like kind of like that uh you know, don't bet against Brady type of thing. Like you, yep. you know, I never Brady did. Always, I made a lot of money on Tom Brady against my friends throughout the years because they always wanted to bet against Brady. And I was like, you you fool. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. I would um, never bet against Mahomes. I mean, I just I just won't. Like I think the 49ers can beat the Chiefs. Yeah. Of course. I think any team can beat the Chiefs. I mean, the Lions showed that week one. Uh but the, you know, I just think that they're gonna find a way to 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 do it. They just do it every year. It's just wild, man. They do, but have their receivers been this bad in years past? No, never, never. 
<laughs> no. no. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, you watch them, man, like, they're point blank. It's like layups and yeah. basketball. They're missing point blank. The, the catches, man, they're right yeah. there. I mean, I remember one game, it was, I can't remember who they were playing, but it was Marquez Valdez Scanlon. He had one right there, man, with a oh, touchdown. Yeah. The deep pass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, and I'm like, bro, <laughs> all year, man, mm -hmm. all year. All year long. And you know what? The postseason is going to start, and they're not going to have a single drop. You watch. It's going to be the exact opposite. They're going to be like, we're catching everything. They're going OBJ on it. You know, some of these catches. <laughs> I would one -handed. hope so for Chiefs fans. I would hope so. Um, <laughs> it'll be fun, man. Like I say, it's going to be very entertaining this year. This is probably the best playoffs I think we're going to have, you know, because a lot of teams are good. Like I said, the AFC is much better. The Browns are really good this year, yeah. too, like you mentioned. You know, mm -hmm. um, so that will be fun to watch them. Joe Flacco, how about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you still got to figure out who's going to win the South, too, right? I mean, you got Jacksonville, you got Houston, you got what, Indy? Like, all yeah. still all still fighting for it. It's going to be a fun weekend this weekend. A bunch of good games to watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Well, um, Nick, I appreciate you coming on the show, man, talking some football with us here and previewing the end of the season and a little bit of the postseason as well. Uh, like like I always say, good luck to your San Francisco 49ers. Even though you don't probably need it. Um, but good luck <laughs> anyway. Um, you bet, man. Good luck to your Falcons as well. No, they definitely need it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, Go Panthers. Right. <laughs> but yeah, man, we'll um, see you next time, all right? All right, bud. We'll see you. All right, man. Thank you, Nick. Anytime, Jake. See you, bud.